Greetings and welcome back to another Bible study. Thank you for joining me. I'm Pastor A.D., Pastor of True Vine, NBC, and I am so excited today to have another study with you guys. Um, and I thank all of you for your support. And to those who, um, who submitted their answers um, on the comments uh, about the next lesson, the next letter that Paul wrote, the third letter um, of the Pauline epistles. And um, I thank you for your answers. No answer is a dumb answer, a stupid answer. But I thank you so much for participating. And um, today we will be starting in Pauline's third letter that he wrote, which is the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians. He wrote this letter right before writing um, the next book. I'm not going to give you that because that'll be your next homework assignment after we finish Galatians. But um, this is the third letter, Galatians, that he wrote. But um, let's pray and then we have a long lesson. So we'll jump right into it. Thank you, God, for another chance, for allowing me to teach, that God actually would open everybody's minds, that God, give us insight of your word, Lord. Give us understanding of your word, Lord. Let your Holy Ghost dwell, that God. Um, let your Holy Ghost dwell with us, Lord. Let it speak to us in the name of Jesus, Lord. Please, Lord, break down every word, every scripture. Please, Lord, we need you, Lord, for your understanding of what Paul is trying to say to the Gentiles, the church. In Jesus' name, we love you. We pray. Thank you for dying and rising on the third day. Bless everybody right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So let's get started. We have a long lesson. Let's get started. So open your book, open your Bibles to Galatians. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. And I'm going to read, of course, my uh, opening because I want to give you a little insight um, about Paul. Who is Paul? And I want to give you a little insight. Then I'm going to what the book is about. Okay. So the title of this, um, this lesson is Apostle Paul's Authority and Freedoms in Christ. Apostle Paul's Authority and in in the Freedoms in Christ. So as we take this endeavor a little further into the Pauline epistles, I want to give you a little background of Apostle Paul. Paul was named after the first Hebrew king who was Saul. Saul was Paul's Hebrew name, and Paul um, was his Greek name. He was born from the tribe of Benjamin. That's Philippians 3 and 5. And because of his father, he was also a Roman citizen. Paul was born about the time of Christ's birth in Tarsus, Acts 9 and 11, an important city in the Roman province of Cilicia, located in Asia Minor, modern Turkey. He spent much of his early life in Jerusalem as a student of the celebrated rabbi Gamaliel. Gamaliel, Gamaliel. Acts 22 and 3. Like his father before him, Paul was a Pharisee. Acts 23 and 6. A member of the strictest Jewish sect. Philipp Philippians 3 and 5. He was a uh, persecutor, murderer of Christians, but miraculously converted while on his way to Damascus. And that's 33, 34 AD when he was converted to arrest Christians in that city. Paul immediately began proclaiming the gospel message, Acts 9 and 20. After narrowly escaping from Damascus with his life, Acts 9, 23 through 25, 2 Corinthians 11, 32 and 33, we will see in this chapter that he spends three years in the, the Nabataean. Arabia south and east of the Dead Sea. During that time, he received much of his doctrine as direct revelation from the Lord. Galatians 1, 11 and 12. We'll talk about that today. With the direct revelations he would receive from God, he goes on to write 13 New Testament books, which, are, which we already completed, the first and second letters, uh, which is 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians. It's two letters, two separate letters. Galatians is, the, is his third letter. So Galatians deals with the important issues, law, grace, works, the gospel, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, our Lord's death, his resurrection, salvation, and sanctification. In this letter, Paul will show, um, will show where true freedom lies, and it lies in the gospel of Jesus Christ. This letter is a hot, volatile, um, righteously angry presentation. 
He writes this under tremendous distress and while righteously angry. The book of Galatians is like a flashing sword in a great swordsman's hand whose heart is on fire to defend something. Paul is defending the gospel that is under assault. That's our job. And secondly, the folks in the churches, in the churches that he established who are, who are being exposed to lies and legalism. So he writes as one who is deeply disturbed, even angry. So let's look at the scriptures. So now it starts off with the greeting and introduction. The salutation um, is actually the first verse through the fifth verse. Okay, the first verse through the fifth verse is the salutation. And so we're going to start with the first verse. Paul, an apostle, not of man, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Let's stop right there. So apostle, apostle means one who was sent or one who um, seen God's faith, who seen God face to face. Christ gave the apostles power to confirm their apostleship with miracles and authority. Matthew 10, 1 and um, 2 Corinthians 12 and 12. 2 Corinthians 12 and 12. Christ himself selected Paul for this position. Acts 9, 15, um, Acts 22, 14, Acts 26, 16, Galatians 1 and 1. And train him to fulfill this ministry. Galatians 1, 12 and 16. Unlike other apostles, Paul received his call from the resurrected, glorified, and exalted Christ. So as you see, he put it out there as soon that he was an apostle. As soon as the letter starts, I'm an apostle. He had to let him know his authority. He's an apostle. He's angry. He's, he's angry, not um, the type of anger that he's ready to um, hurt someone. But um, he just wanted, he's angry because of the um, false prophets coming in the church, perverting the word of God. And so the second verse, in all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. So the churches, in, uh, the churches he and uh, his friend Barnabas founded at Antioch of uh, Poseida and um, um, Lystra and Derby. And, and during this first missionary journey, um, and, and would visit again on his second and third missionary journey. Acts 13, 14, uh, Acts 13, that whole chapter. Acts 14, um, actually that whole chapter. So when he went into a, any Gentile town, he would go first to the synagogue. Why? Because as a Jew, he had connections. And because the gospel came to what the Jew first and then to the Gentile. He would go there to see if the Lord would save some Jews. Then he would have some people to come with him to reach the Gentiles. That's what he would do every single time. So the third verse says, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father, from our Lord Jesus Christ. So this was the only letter that Paul did not, uh, did not receive any type of commendations. He did not say anything, any compliments to the church, any nice things to the church. He went right into it because of his anger. He was angry of what was going on in the church. And so he attacks the um, Judaizers, the Judaizers, uh, with grace be to you in peace because they didn't believe in this. Because this greeting attacks the Judaizers, legalistic system. If salvation is by works as they claimed, it is not of grace and cannot result in peace, since no one can be sure he has enough good works to be eternally secure. Okay, we're going to get more into the Judaizers. You can pronounce it Judaizers or Judaizers, either or, um, either or. Um, so fourth verse, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from the present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. So for our sins. For our sins. This confirms the divine desire expressed in verse 3 in the view of Jesus sacrificing himself for believers. It is certainly his wish that they receive grace and peace. That every Christian receive grace and peace. That's God. That's his wish. He alone might deliver us. Talks about that in this fourth verse. He alone might deliver us. Means Jesus, rather than anyone else, any other, any other religion, any other false god, um, the, for the gospel is the emancipation 
from state from a state of spiritual bondage. The gospel is the emancipation from a state of spiritual bondage. So we all have been uh, um, delivered, set free with the gospel. We are no longer in bondage of sin. Now we are in spiritual bondage. <laughs> we are slaves for Christ. We are friends of God. We are, uh, we are the church. And the clause also strikes at the Galatians theological era of trying to rescue themselves by their own effort through the law. And then it talks about the evil age, not referring to a period of time, okay, but in order or system, in order or system. The current world system ruled by Satan, Romans 12, Romans 12, um, that's verse 2 in Romans 12. 1 John, 2nd chapter, 15th, 16th verse. <clears throat> Now we forget interesting, real interesting, because after the fifth verse, after to whom be the Lord forever and ever, amen. Now Paul addresses the problem. The Galatians currently contemplate the acceptance of a false gospel. They were believing what the what these false prophets were saying. They, they started to believe it. They were easily shaken by the word of God. It was easily um, to run to whatever they heard. It didn't matter. Whichever way the wind blows, they're going. You know, so um, and some of us are like that today. We we run with anything. Anything we hear somebody say, we run with it. Well, you know, pastor such and such said that, you know, such preacher, this preacher said this. And, and I believe, no, no, no. Study to show thine self-approval. You got to study the word of God yourself and stop listening to everything someone says. Um, don't be so gullible. Don't be so gullible. Verse six, it reads, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. <laughs> Stop right there. So you are so far removed. So you are deserting. That means you are deserting the word of God. You are deserting the gospel. You are deserting God. You are deserting Jesus Christ. That's what it's saying. It's like a military desertion, which was punishable by death. So this indicates that the Galatian believers were voluntarily deserting grace to pursue legalism taught by false teachers. Who had perverted the gospel. And Paul is furious. Yes, he is. He's angry. So quickly, they were turning away. They would turn, it was so quick. I mean, it didn't take much. I mean, like a snap of the finger, they were turning away from God. And Christ, grace of Christ, talks about the grace of Christ. God's free and sovereign act of mercy in granting salvation through his death and resurrection, totally apart from any human work. It's totally set apart from any human work. Um, you can't do it on your own. You couldn't save yourself on your own. You needed Christ to save you. It, 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 I always say that I was glad when, um, when when Jesus brought me to Himself. When He when He brought me out. When He when He brought me and called me to uh, the ministry. Called me uh, to be a believer. Called me out of the world into the marvelous light. So I was excited. I always say that. I don't ever say what I did. I, I always say what God has done for me. And that's what he has done. We have been chosen by Christ. We have been chosen by him to be in his kingdom. And that is very exciting news. So let's look. It says in this verse 6, it talks about um, um, the difference, the, the, the gospel, different from the gospel. To make matters worse, there were other Jews who claimed to be Christians. And those Jews who claimed to be Christians were called um, Judaizers or Judaizers, either one. Um, they claim to believe in Christ and to be sent by James, Jesus' brother. But they also believe that you could not be saved without circumcision and adherence to the Mosaic ceremonies, observance of the Sabbath traditions. So they believe that you couldn't be sanctified without continuing to keep the Mosaic law, um, external ceremony and rules and traditions. They wanted to hold on to the traditions and be saved by Christ. That wasn't going to work. Either you're going to be saved, by, washed by his blood, totally saved by his grace, um, or you're going to believe in the law and, and, and follow the law. And that wasn't that wasn't the thing. And that wasn't the thing because Jesus came to fulfill the law. And so when Jesus fulfilled the law and, and, and by his blood, um, we have been washed, we have been saved, we have been redeemed, we have been bought with a price. And so no longer do the law holds us bound. No longer do the law holds us bound. Now we are free in Christ. And they wanted both. They taught both. And uh, they were corrupting 
other people in the church. They were corrupting the church. So they were trying to ju Judaize the Christians, Judaize the Christians, both Jew and Gentile. So Paul went right to the issue. No words of commendation. Like I said earlier, he went right to the issue. And as you have to do sometimes as preaching, whenever there's a problem in the church, we go right to the issue. Um, there's no... Uh, Messing around, no uh, taking time with an opening and all that, you know, being cute with the opening. No, we go right to the issue and correct the problem. Right to the issue to correct the problem. Seventh verse, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So let's look at this seventh verse. So not another, trouble, pervert. Greek word here, another is allo which means another of the same kind, another of the same kind. So the message of salvation proclaimed by the legalist is vastly different from the true one. Trouble could mean here to disturb, to shake back and forth, meaning to agitate or stir up. And that's what they were doing. They were stirring up the church. You got some folks today in the church that love to stir up mess and keep mess going. And, um, and that's sad, but uh, no church is perfect. But there are, but there are people that just love to do that. They love to stay just there to stir up, stir up mess, stir up mess. All they're there for. They ain't there to learn. They ain't there to hear the word of God. They look. They there to see what people got on, see what's going on in the church, just so they can stir up some mess. This was a deep emotional disturbance the Galatians believers experienced. Paul is so shocked, completely stunned by the fact that they are listening to the Juda Judaizers. And so he launches out and saying, I don't care who they are. <laughs> I don't care who they are, which brings us to verse eight. I don't care who they are, which brings us to verse eight. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any of the gospel unto you than which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed or anameth. Let him be accursed. So we are any angel from heaven accursed. He was hypothetically speaking calling on the most unlikely, unlikely examples for false teaching himself and the angels. If Paul's doctrine of salvation differs in the slightest degree from God's truth, this is for everybody, even, even every minister today, if it differs in, in, in the slightest degree from God's truth revealed through Christ and the apostles, let him be accursed. Even if a holy angel preaches a difference, hypothetically speaking again, even if a holy angel preaches any uh, different gospel, any other kind of gospel than Paul and the and uh, the apostles. Let him be eternally condemned to hell. Let him be accursed. That's what a curse means. Let him go to hell. Let him be condemned. Uh, that's Romans nine, verse three. First Corinthians twelve, verse three. First Corinthians sixteen and twenty-two. To all ministers, to all ministers, be careful what gospel you are preaching. This ain't, this ain't, we got to be careful because, man, a lot of you got to repent for this uh, prosperity gospel. A lot of you got to re repent from the prosperity gospel. It's not about that. It's not about it. Everybody's not going to be rich. We are rich in Christ, but just, everybody's not going to be materialistically rich. Um, have big houses and nice cars and all that. Stop preaching that mess to people. It's like every sermon is about money. Every sermon is about money. Ninth verse. As we said before, so say, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. He reiterates, he reiterates. So, as he said before, in verse 8, like he said in verse 8, this refers to what Paul had taught during an early, earlier visit to this church. He uh, says it again, what verse 8 said, he, he, he directing this statement to the Judaizer, Judaizers, um, since they were doing just that. So the Judaizers were something else, man. They were something else in the church. I can only imagine. And um, and what to be, they were the Judaizers were to be uh, devoted to destruction because of their damning heresy. Mormons, that's also like Mormons, um, Jehovah Witnesses, um, Hinduism, cults, Buddhism. On and on, etc. It's so many, so many uh, religions out there, false religions, and that's why I'm glad that I am in a faith. I am in a faith, um, and I thank God for Jesus Christ for who He is and what He has died for our sins, and He got up on the third day. He has saved. We are saved 
uh, by grace. We are saved by grace through faith. I am so glad. Um, but but he was addressing this eighth verse and ninth verse to the Ju Judaizers. He was letting them know <laughs> that they will be accursed for um, preaching a perverted gospel. They will be accursed. Tenth verse. For do I now persuade man or God, or do I seek to please man? For if I please, if I yet please man, I should not be the servant of Christ. Man, I love that. Stop right there. So, still please man. When he used uh, to persecute Christians, it would please his fellow Jews. His fellow, it would please them when he used to kill all the Christians and how many he can kill and all that. It was a number thing. And, and, and then he was receiving different ranks every time he would persecute or capture a Christian. I mean, he was just growing, um, fastly in, um, in, 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 in Jewish, in, um, Judaism. He was growing quickly. So quickly he was growing. He was, he, man, he was just soaring to the top and, and he was doing the opposite of what he's doing now, preaching the gospel. He was killing the gospel. He was trying to uh, kill off all the Christians, the apostles. That's what he was doing. That was his job. Remember when Stephen got stoned, he was there. He was there when Stephen got stoned. And um, and he was, I mean, Paul was something else. He, he, he admits, he says, I was the worst sinner that ever lived. And, um, and he always, he admitted that a lot in the Bible about being the worst sinner whoever lived. So if God can save a murderer, he can save anybody. He can save you. If God can deliver him, he can deliver you. And he used him in a mighty way. So, but now that's not Paul. He's not here. To, he's not pleasing men. He's not here to please men, but he's here to please Christ. And he says, I'm a bound servant of Christ. I'm a bond servant of Christ. He was sold out for Christ, a committed, a committed slave for Christ. That's what he was, a slave for Christ. He was very committed for Christ, which caused him a great deal of suffering for others, which caused him a great deal of suffering for others. Six, that's, that's chapter six of Galatians, verse 17. And chapter 6 of Galatians, verse 12, such personal sacrifice is the exact opposite of pleasing man. Such personal sacrifice is the exact opposite of pleasing men. So he was all about pleasing Christ. He wasn't worried about what men say about him, what they, how they felt about him. It wasn't about that, how they looked at him. He was about his father's business. That's what he was about. He was about pleasing God. And, um, and he was definitely bold at it. And uh, so... That's how we should be today, man. We should be after Christ, relentless after Christ. We should be out there um, doing God's will, telling people about Christ, even at our job, telling people about Jesus Christ, inviting them to Christ, um, bringing them to Christ, um, talking about Christ. You know, you reel them in with a different kind of conversation, then you slowly bring Christ in, and that's how you grab them. That's discipleship, one-on-one, and so one-on-one. So it's important um, to learn how to disciple. I taught um, Truvine how to disciple those who came to Bible study. I taught them how to disciple um, um, and what it was about because that's what we all, we all are disciples for Christ. We all should be on missions, um, on missions for Christ. We all should be telling somebody about Jesus, telling somebody about Jesus. So in this 11th verse, 11 on down to close out, Paul gospel is defended. He defends his gospel. Paul begins to defend um, his apostleship. Put it like that. He defends his apostleship and the gospel at the same time. And then he'll go on to the chapter two of Galatians defending the gospel also. He'll keep going. But he got to, he must, it's a, it would behoove him to defend the gospel of God and to defend his apostleship. 11 verse. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. He's still on that point. So make known to you the gospel. In an emphatic statement, Paul introduced a gospel, not of man origin, or it would it would have been like all other human religions, uh, permeated with works, righteousness, born of man's pride and Satan's deception. Romans 1 and 16, Romans 1 and 16. So, if it would have been a man, it would have been just like any other other religion there is around that that, that was then. And that's now that uh, they make you feel good and, 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 and say that um, that because of your works, uh, you going to this place or that place or or um, uh, 
I mean, every religion has its own. I studied a lot of different um, religions, um, and a lot of them have their own belief, and it, and some of them are pretty similar, but there's none like ours. Ours is a faith, and we believe that Jesus, uh, the greatest sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice, that he died, and he got up for our sins, and we are free from sin. We are free from sin. It's not our works. That's, that's what separates us. It's not our works that get us to heaven. It's our faith that get us to heaven. It's not our works. It's our faith. We have been justified. We have been sanctified. And one day we'll be glorified. And so we are separated from the other beliefs, um, the other belief system, because we don't believe that works get us to heaven. No, works get you your reward, but it doesn't get you to heaven. I want you to remember that. Works does not get you to heaven, but it does get you your reward. Okay? 12th verse, for I neither received it, I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Man, I love it. So, never received it from man, nor was I taught it, unlike the um, Judaizers who received their religious instruction from the um, rabbi tradition. Most Jews didn't study the actual scriptures. They did not. They held on to the truth traditions and what they were taught. Instead, they used human interpretations of scripture as their religious authority and guide. Many of their traditions not only were not taught in scripture, but also contradicted it. Matthew 7 and 13, Matthew, I mean Mark 7 and 13, I'm sorry, Mark 7 and 13. Through the revelation, through the revelation it talks about that, refers to the unveiling of something previously kept secret, in this case, Jesus Christ. Paul heard about Christ but met him on the way to Damascus and received the truth of the gospel from him. Acts 9, Acts 9, 1 through 16. He received seven mysteries from Christ while in Arabia for three years. So Jesus was uh, speaking to him. They had, oh man, this is the only apostle that would receive this many one-on-one uh, -on -one revelation uh, meetings. With, with God. I mean, it was one-on-one. -on -one. It was one-on-one. -on -one. Of course, he didn't see God face-to-face, -face, literally, because Paul would have died right then and there. What did he do to Moses? When God came to talk to Moses, he hid, he hid Moses in the cleft of the rock. And so um, Moses would have died right there and there because of God's glory. He's too powerful. He's too strong. So God spoke to him and gave him seven mysteries. Seven mysteries. Some people, some theologians say ten. Some say nine. Some say eight. But I believe it's seven mysteries from Christ while in Arabia. I taught on that also. And um, <clears throat> so he wasn't taught by men. He, wasn't, he didn't go under the apostles. He didn't go seek Peter first. No, he went straight to Arabia. He went into Arabia, into the mountains, and, and he began to seek Christ for himself. And um, the Nabataeans, the, uh, it was also Nabataeans, the mountains, the place where he was in Arabia. And there was some people there. I believe they came um, a little bit after Paul. Uh, um, yeah, I think a little bit after Paul, or either right before Paul, but they, they're, they're a race. You can't find them now, nowhere. Something happened, something happened. It was like a thousand years after Moses, the uh, Nabataeans um, came and they made their place in the desert. And it's beautiful. It's still there today. Their place is still there today in Arabia and uh, where you can go and visit and see the sites. It's beautiful. Um, just tune in on YouTube. You can see it. But um, they, they, they just vanished, suddenly vanished, and uh, they're no longer around. But um, he went there for revelation. He went there to seek God, um, and he sought God. And he and God, man, really started speaking to Paul. Paul was very powerful. He became very powerful in wonders and miracles and um, teachings in his letters. And he became this great apostle. And he was the apostle to the Gentiles. He was the apostle to the Gentiles. So, 13th verse. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Hmm. Let's look at that. So, Judaism, the Jewish religious system of works righteousness, based not primarily on the Old Testament text, but on the uh, rabbi interpretations and traditions persecuted. It says persecuted, talks about being persecuted. This emphasis Paul 
emphasizes Paul's um, persistent and uh, continual effort to hurt and ultimately exterminate the Christians. Acts, book of Acts 8, 1 through 3. Acts 9, 1. Um, 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 14. 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 14. So, so but they, they stayed in this tradition, the Jews. Jesus even warned them about being in tradition so much. He said, forget about the traditions. The tradition is gone. Now it's me. If, if put it like this, Jesus came for the lost sheep, for the lost sheep of Israel. So at that moment, when Jesus was here on earth, when God himself, when he was here on earth, if the Jews would have received him when he was here, of course, they neglected him, but if they would have received him, then his kingdom would have started right then and there. He would have brought the kingdom right then and there. However, they neglected him. And so, since they neglected him and pushed him away, he already had, before Paul, Apostle Paul was born, he already ordained Paul. He knew Paul before he was born. And so he ordained Paul. He knew he was going to be a murderer. He knew he was going to be a persecutor. That's, how, that's just how God works. And then he brought him out. See, God will use folks that you already counted out, that you don't even think about that here. He already you he he already have have it set who um, the people who he's gonna use for for his kingdom building. And so he chose Paul. And so Paul, after being converted, after going to Arabia for three long years, hearing from God, now <laughs> he is a powerful man of God. He is a powerful man of God. 14th verse, and profited in the Jewish religion above many, my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Let's stop right there. So Paul advanced, he talked about advancing beyond. Advancing beyond means to, to uh, um, chop ahead, to go ahead, chop ahead. And so Paul chopped Christians down who was in the path of his advancement in Judaism. So exceedingly, he talks about being exceedingly zealous by the uh, pursue, pursuing and persecuting Christians. He was he was very zealous with that um, traditions, holding on traditions of his fathers, the oral teach oral teachings commonly known as the halakha, the halakha, um, and also the law itself called the Torah. Okay, and so they held on today, even today, Judaism they still hold they're still holding on to traditions. Holding on to traditions uh, still today. And of course, there's Jews who are saved. Then, even during this time, it was Jews. The church was mixed with Jews and Gentiles. And so, you have the saved Jews that saved, that saved by grace, like we are, believe in Jesus Christ. And they have faith in Christ. And they believe that Jesus died and rose and got up on the third day. And they're also uh, Jews today. That, that live today, they're saved. And that believe that Jesus died just like we do. They're part of the church. So 15th verse, when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by grace. This is what I was just talking about. Separated me from my mother's womb. Not physically, not physically, okay? He's not talking about that. Being set apart to God for his service from the time of his birth. That's what he's talking about. So he was already being set apart, um, um, set apart to God for service from the time of his birth. So this phrase refers to God's election of Paul without regard for his personal merit or effort, without regard of his works. Um, Isaiah 49 and 1, Isaiah 49 and 1, Jeremiah 1, verse 5, Romans 9, 10 through 23, Romans 9, 10 through 23. And I'm going to continue to say Romans 9 because that's when Paul comes in the picture. So that whole chapter, Romans 9, um, called me through his grace. He talks about being called through his through God's grace. So God's effectual call. That's God's effectual call. Romans 1, um, 7, Romans 8, 30. Before God, before Paul, I'm sorry, did I say Romans 9 is when Paul comes? No. I mean Acts 9. Acts 9. That's when um, I'm sorry. Acts 9. That's when Paul comes into the picture of Acts, Acts 9. And you can read that whole chapter. But before Paul was a murderer. God had already chosen him to salvation. So before he was a murderer, God already chosen him for salvation. And we talked about that earlier. I just talked about that. That um, before, before we were born, those who are saved, God has already chosen us for salvation. Okay? 
And so Paul was chosen for salvation. He already know God knows everything before it happens. He, but things must happen no matter, no matter how um, bad it is or, or how good it is. Things must happen. Um, some things are horrific to see. But however, it must happen. Um, because God must get the glory out of it. God will and must get the glory out of it. He must be praised. He must be praised. He must be recognized some kind of way. And he's going to be revealed. He's going to be recognized some kind of way. Verse 16, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. <laughs> Immediately, I conferred not with flesh and blood. So reveal his son in me. Not only was Christ revealed to Paul on the Damascus road, but in him, God gave him life, light in faith to believe in him. Preach among the Gentiles. Talked about that. His specific calling was to proclaim the gospel to the non-Jews. Jesus' ministry was specifically, talked about this earlier. Jesus' ministry was specifically to the Jews. Matthew 15, 24. He did not look to any other apostle or preacher for clarification or additional revelation. He received all from Christ. Acts 9, 19 and 20. Acts 9, 19 and 20. And that's, that's the problem today. We try to um, add revelation to the Bible. This is revelation. This is God's revelation. This is all we need right here that's in this book. This is God's revelation in this book right here. And, and um, during Paul's time, Paul was writing this revelation. Paul, Peter, and a few more apostles was writing the revelation that, so that we can have this, the, the word of God. We do not need any added revelation to this Bible. Those who have Bible, I, I'm hearing that some churches have their own Bibles. They have the added stuff. They have deleted stuff. Oh, no, you don't want to do that. The Bible clearly says do not add or nor take away from my word. Or you will, uh, or the plagues of this Bible will be added unto you. And um, that's the worst thing to do. Do not add nor take away from the word of God. What it says is what it says. It is what it is. I always remember that it is what it is. The word of God is immutable. It never changes. It never changes. It don't change like we do. This will never change, nor will it ever fade away. It will never fade away. The word of God is the holy word of God. This is God breathing out. He's breathing out, and that's how they wrote it. He breathed out on the word of God. So it's very important that we take the word of God seriously, that we obey the word of God, that we listen to the word of God, and that we... Uh, we feel sometimes condemned by the word of God and we need to uh, straighten out, uh, convicted, I would say, and straighten out our ways and, and, and um, look in this mirror and see what it's saying, examine ourselves and see what's going on with our lives instead of everybody else's lives, okay? Um, so do not add nor take away from the word of God. Do not um, change it just to satisfy your living. Do not change it just to satisfy your living. Uh, your living habits. Verse 17, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them, which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Okay. I said that earlier too. Jerusalem, Arabia, Damascus, rather than immediately traveling to Jerusalem to be instructed by the apostles, apostle Peter and all others, he went to the uh, Nabataean mountains, um, Arabia, the wilderness, the desert, after being uh, prepared for the ministry by the Lord, he returned to minister in nearby Damascus. He returned to, to minister in nearby Damascus. Okay. And so instead of going to kill on that road, after the fact of his conversion, he went and received revelation from God and learned from God. And he left. And after the three years was up, he left and went back to Damascus to minister God's word, to heal to deliver God's word. Isn't that something? How God can change you that quickly. That's amazing how God can just turn you out in one day. That's amazing how God can change you like that. And um, it just took a few minutes. That's all it took. It, 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 it had taken just a few minutes and God changed his mind. Isn't that something? Because God changed my mind within a few minutes. Hallelujah. God can change your mind within a few minutes. You thinking one thing, you thinking evil. And in, uh, in one minute, you thinking evil. In one minute, God changed your mind, and now you're thinking about God. You're thinking about holiness. You're thinking about peace. You're thinking about joy. Man, it's something how God can change your mind. 
by God. Because nothing won't happen until God, till you change your mind, till your mind is changed. Nothing won't happen until you're ready for change. Understand? I want you to always remember that. Nothing won't happen until you're ready for change. Paul had a special calling, a special mission, a mission um, during that time. He had, uh, understand, the apostles were different, different then. They, they had apostolic power. And so they had the power, uh, some power of God, put it like that. And they had the power of God. So they had the power to raise the dead. They had the power to heal. They had the power to do all these uh, immaculate signs and wonders. They had all these, they had all these gifts. And so, um, and they were different. And, and God um, used them uh, mightily um, during this, during that time to move, to, to um, instruct, to reproof. I mean, he really used them, used them because Jews, they what? Prefer a sign. They need a sign in order to believe. Greeks seek wisdom, wisdom, but we believe Jesus crucified and, and resurrected. We believe that's what we believe. And so um, they needed a sign. Jews needed a sign, but Paul was to the Jew was to the Gentile. Of course, he would go to the Jews first, like I said earlier. But he was his his ultimate ministry was to the Gentiles, to us. And so that's why I say this is our apostle, Apostle Paul. He is to us, the Pauline apostles, Pauline apostles. So, um, verse 18, then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. Okay. So three years, the time from Paul's conversion to the first journey to Jerusalem in Acts 9, in Acts 9, 26 through 30, I told you that whole chapter in, in um, Acts 9, just read that whole chapter. During those years, he made a visit to Damascus and resided in Arabia under the instructions of the Lord. Peter, to become um, acquainted with Peter. He went to go see Peter. Talks about he went to see Peter. To become acquainted with Peter, who was the most powerful spokesman in the early years of Jerusalem church. Remember Acts 1, when he preached and thousands were saved. I mean, he preached the, the day of Pentecost and thousands were saved. Peter, who couldn't even read. He preached the word of God. Boy, he can preach, and he preached powerfully. I mean, it was powerful. And uh, But Peter, who was um, really the head of the apostles, um, the ones that walked with Jesus, of course, Matthias took Judah's spot. And um, so Peter was the head. He was the oldest. He was the eldest. And so um, Peter was a powerful preacher, and he was also scared of... Paul, a lot of them were scared of Paul, majority of them were scared of Paul, they knew who Paul was, they knew his name, they knew that he was a murderer, they knew that he was a persecutor of the Christians, and so um, he went to get acquainted with Peter, to let Peter know, I'm not like that no more, God has changed my life, and um, so let's look at verse 19, but other, but other of apostles saw I none, save James, except James, the Lord's brother, except James, the Lord's brother, so James, the Lord's brother, Jesus' brother. Mary was no longer a virgin, okay? She was no longer, after she had Jesus, she was no longer a virgin. She went on, and uh, her and Joseph, they conceived James. And um, so that's Acts 15, 13. Um, Acts 15, 13. Mary was no longer that. Um, Acts 15, 13, when he met James, he saw James. Though Catholicism say differently. Catholicism believed that Mary is was still a virgin. That was the she had, she had Jesus, and that was the only child she had. She stayed a virgin. That's not true. The Bible complete, clearly says and talks about Jesus' brother James, his brother James, not brother as far as um, just your brother and sister in Christ. No, that was his literally blood brother. Um, that was his brother as far as um, coming from Mary, coming from Mary. Okay, of course, Jesus was. Um, conceived by the Holy Spirit, um, there was, there was um, not any sexual acts or nothing like that to conceive him. Uh, however, that was his brother, James. That was his brother, James. She, Mary, did not stay a virgin after, uh, after creating, uh, after Jesus came. She did not stay a, a virgin. She did not stay a virgin. She had James, and that's the word of God. This is the Bible. 20th verse, now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. So Paul had been accused by the Jewish legalists of being a liar. So he had to defend himself. Of course, the false prophet is always going to say that the preacher or the pastor is a liar. So 
you know, so you won't believe him. Uh, 21st verse. Afterwards, I came into the uh, regions of Syria and Cilicia. Okay. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia. So this area included his hometown of Tarsus. He preached in, in this region for several years. Acts 9, again, Acts 9, uh, verse 30. Acts 15, verse 23. Barnabas joins Paul when the word of revival reached Jerusalem. Acts 11, Acts 11, verse 20 through 26. Paul stayed in that area as pastors in, in their church of, in the church of Antioch. Okay, Paul stayed in that area as the pastor in the church of Antioch. Okay, so Paul was very uh, committed. He was very committed. He was very loyal to God. Um, anywhere God wanted him to go, anything he needed to do, he's going to do it. Even if he, he'd been stoned once, he's going to go back again if he can. He's going to go back again to preach again, to get stoned again. I know it sounds crazy, but he was crazy for God. I mean, it was just... He was just that crazy for God. He was that outgoing for God, that loyal. He was he had a loyalty for God. Um, and he was relentless when it came to um, teaching and preaching God's word. He loved to do that. And so he would put his own self in harm's way um, just to get God's word across. And some of us today won't, won't even leave the house. We won't go nowhere. We won't even leave the four walls of the church. We won't go nowhere. Uh, uh, we love to please people with the word of God instead of pleasing God with the word of God. If you get what I'm saying, if you catch my drift. Um, 22nd verse, and was unknown by faith unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. So Judea, the region in which Jerusalem was located, because of his absence, because of Paul's absence in Jerusalem, he was unknown by faith unto the churches of Judea. Of course, if he would have been in Judea with the other apostles, they would have known Paul, uh, without a doubt. They would have known Paul. Paul, um, I know I said Peter was the head of the apostles. Of course, he was at first. However, when Paul comes into the picture, now Paul, um, he corrects Peter. He corrects uh, Mark. He corrects a lot of them about um, serving God, about the ministry, about the um, word of God, about the gospel. He corrects them and, um, and how they are treating other people. Because um, one, I give you um, one um, event that happened. Um, Peter was sitting down and eating with the Gentiles. And soon, at, and at, as soon as his um, brothers, the Jewish brothers, come walking in, oh, he hurry up and jumps and get up from the table and runs over there and go sit over there with the Jews. And it's like, Paul had to call him out on that. Like, no, nah, Peter, this, this is not how it works, buddy. And so um, Paul really uh, was stern with the word of God when it came to, uh, to, his, to the, the fellow apostles fellow brethren that he was uh, really firm with them and, and really let them know uh took a firm stand firm stance and, and let them know that hey this is not how that worked you no know, no 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 this is not how we do um we love everybody you know don't just act like that just because or, 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 or you know don't be uh <laughs> sometime we call it sometime don't be um one day you like this, and then one day you like that. That's no, no, that's not how it is. Be a real, be real, keep it real, be real. Be a real, true Christian. And so, verse 23, but they had heard only that he which persecuted us in the times past now preacheth, preacheth the faith which once he destroyed. <laughs> so, Paul spent over 14 long years in the regions of Syria and Cilicia. During this period, he preached the faith which he once destroyed. Throughout this um, lengthy evangelistic activity in the north, Paul was too far removed from the apostles in Jerusalem to have received any instruction from them. So he was separated from them. He was too far removed from them to receive any instruction from them. Because uh, he, he spent a long time, 14 years, a long time to be in, um, in this area preaching the word of God. But they needed to hear the word of God, and he made sure that they heard it. Um, 24th verse, the last verse. And they glorified God in me. They glorified God in me. Proof that the gospel Paul preached was the same one that the other apostles had taught, the Judean believers, okay? he uh, That was proof. That's, that's so true because before Paul came along, Apostle Peter, Apostle John, all the other apostles, Apostle James, all of them, they were preaching the word of God to Judea 
And so uh, once Paul came along years later to preach to them, they received him with open arms. They loved to hear, hear, hear the word of God from Paul. So they were all teaching the same thing. They were all teaching the same thing. And I thank God. I mean, that is the end of the lesson. And I thank God. I told you it was a long lesson, but I loved it. I love every minute of it, uh, every minute of studying and writing my notes. Um, but uh, we will continue, uh, continue on through the Pauline Apostles. Um, next time we will see Galatians 2. Galatians 2. And it would talks about he would he would have to defend the gospel. He would have to defend the gospel against the false prophets and the Judaizers, um, Judaizers. OK, um, and he would defend the gospel. He would. Um, he would also charge Peter. <laughs> Paul, again, like I just talked about, he will uh, he will make himself known. He will Paul as an apostle. He. Not only did he carry the title, but he lived the title. So it's not all about titles. It's about can you live that title? To whom much is given, much is required. So can you live that title that you have, whether it's a doctor, whether it's an apostle, whether it's a bishop? Can you live, can you live that title? Can you show that you are who you say you are? Uh, are you just caught up on titles? Paul wasn't. Paul uh, really lived out his title as an apostle um, and he was a true apostle a real apostle and I thank God for you for your support again if you like the videos give a don't forget to give the thumbs up and also leave a comment in the comment box I love you and I thank you for all your support and to true vine I love you and I can't wait to see you in person for we are true vine the church of love God bless Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and join our online Christian family. Tithes, offerings, and donations can be made via Cash App at dollar sign TVMBC or by mail at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church, 1407 Grove Street, Houston, Texas, 77020. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.